Significant momentum is building in the open RAN sector as more and more network operators explore alternative radio access network architectures. But concerns remain about the potential of open RAN systems to reach parity with traditional systems based on custom silicon and closed interfaces. So can merchant silicon based RAN equipment really address the TCO concerns of operators? Xilinx thinks so. Anthony Collins, the company's director for Radio IP, to tell us more. Anthony, over to you. Thanks for the introduction, Ray. So um, on the 29th of June, actually, we'll talk about some of these issues, and it all comes down to TCO, as Ray said. Um, the operators are increasingly looking at the total cost of ownership for these ORAN uh, equipment. So with NTT Tacomo, we will talk a little bit about their progress on Open RAN and their strategy around Open RAN and the role Xilinx is playing there. But they'll also highlight some of the challenges around Open RAN and specifically point to some of the TCO concerns for uh, Open RAN equipment. On the radio side, uh, we will spend some time talking about our latest silicon for the uh, ORU. Uh, a new device coming to market this year. And in fact, we'll demonstrate the device at Mobile World Congress uh, virtual demo is RFSOC DFE. Now this device is uh, built on our previous RFSOC uh, generation, which was a combination of programmable logic and a unique integration of direct RF sampling transceiver. So a huge amount of integration there. And this platform, uh, powered some of the massive MIMO deployments in the first wave of 5G. But again, as the concern turns to TCO, operators are looking for better silicon and hardware solutions. So Xilinx has developed uh, RFSOC DFE, this adaptive SOC, which is a combination of our proven programmable logic technology but also includes some standard cell ASIC blocks. So the radio processing is a combination of the programmable logic, but also optimized standard cell implementation. And again, we retain the integration of the direct RF sampling transceiver. So the, the upshot of all of this is uh, about a halving of the power consumption in the silicon and a doubling of the throughput or bandwidth that these devices uh, can support. So going a long way to address some of these concerns around the silicon specifically for the radio. Um, the other area, of course, uh, is the power amplifier. It's actually the power amplifier that is consuming the line share of the energy in the radio, in fact, and is driving much of the OPEX and cost of the radio in terms of delivering that output power to the antenna. And we've rightly focused on spectral efficiency for the last number of generations or Gs, but the upshot of all of that is that we've uh, created a big challenge for the power amplifier. And this is an area that requires a lot of investment and support. And particularly for new entrants coming into ORAN, they may not have the large R&D investment required to develop their own IP and solutions around this. And Xilinx has been developing solutions for the PA efficiency in the form of DPD IP for about 10 years now. And uh, again, we'll showcase some of our latest IP at Mobile World Congress. Uh, this IP is specifically designed to leverage the new GAN PA technology that promises to deliver greater efficiency on the power amplifier. Uh, the efficiency will be higher, but GAN comes with some of its own unique challenges, and we will be showing how we can manage some of those challenges with our latest uh, DPD IP. And I think another important area, I've sort of alluded to this already by commenting on the adaptive SOC being a combination of programmable logic and uh, hardened uh, ASIC, if you like. Uh, and, and the reason the programmable logic is there is the need for flexibility. I mean, the sheer number of radio variants, SKUs, bandwidths, output power, sub six gigahertz, millimeter wave, all of these radios uh, will have to be delivered. And having a flexible platform on which to deliver these variants is very important. And that's where the programmable logic comes in. The 
programmable logic together with these uh, standard cell ASIC blocks mean that we have a highly adaptable solution to uh, deliver solutions for all of these different radio variants on the same silicon platform. So great scope there for design reuse or for innovation. And, and I think the innovation in particular in the radio uh, can really be leveraging the programmable logic to deliver new ways of solving problems in the radio whether it's improving the efficiency of the power amplifier or you know, introducing some new signal processing techniques that can address some of these new use cases that are starting to appear with 5G. So the programmable logic really offers scope there to do unique things and deliver differentiation w way beyond uh, ASSP and, and ASIC for that matter. So I, th I think the other area that we will spend some time looking at is the whole area of the virtualized RAN and the use of uh, COTS hardware for the baseband processing. And NTD Tacoma will, will highlight some of the obvious advantages there in terms of CAPEX and the sheer flexibility that the COTS hardware can offer and the move to uh, software-based solutions. However, they will also point out some of the concerns around TCO uh, especially when compared to some of the dedicated solutions that are available in the market today, optimized hardware and so forth. So if we look at where things have come from, uh, you know, pre-virtualization, you had dedicated baseband hardware, very efficient based on ASIC and FPGA, in fact. And now we're moving to uh, COTS hardware, uh, standard uh, processors, software, and here there's a real need to address uh, some of that TCO through the use of compute offload or acceleration in the COTS hardware. FPGAs have been shown to deliver huge benefits in the data center for a number of years now, managing many different types of uh, workloads and uh, doing so very energy efficiently. So it's not surprising that we're starting to see FPGAs being used in the virtual RAN on these uh, COTS hardware platforms. Um, so Xilinx will be talking about uh, our uh, telco acceleration cards, the T1 and T2. T1 uh, provides both offload for front hall termination and L1 channel encode, decode, offload from the processor system. And then we have T2, which is optimized for very high throughput uh, L1 offload only. So that card is designed to be used with a standard NIC card uh, for the front hall and delivers um, a huge amount of throughput with PCI Gen 4 interfacing and dedicated hardware on that card. So if we take a look at the T2 card, for example, and we'll have a demonstration at Mobile World Congress as well for this card. This card uses something called a ZU48 device, and again, it incorporates standard cell ASIC functionality for the uh, LDPC and channel encode, decode, offload, along with the programmable logic. And we will have a demo that shows this card running on a standard uh, AMD server and uh, doing uh, offload for two virtual machines, two virtual DUs, and maintaining full throughput uh, through that card. And then we'll switch over to four virtual machines and again show that with four virtual DUs, we can achieve uh, the same kind of throughput when we offload the L1 functionality to the card. So that should be an interesting demo at Mobile World Congress. And again, just to mention that uh, the, the software framework used here is exactly the same that's used for a pure software implementation. Uh, you'll use the same DPDK, BBDev APIs. And when the card is in the system, uh, the compute for the L1 uh, will be offloaded to the card. And the upshot here is a big reduction in the number of CPU uh, cores required to do uh, the processing. So really addressing those TCO concerns of operators. So again, just to mention, we will be at uh, Mobile World Congress on the 29th. We'll have an hour session there and we'll cover quite a lot of material in that hour. It's a good opportunity to come along and get a sense of what's happening for uh, new silicon and hardware to optimize your ORAN solutions. A chance to meet some of the Xilinx folks at the show and ask some questions. So if you can make it, we hope to see you there on the 29th of June at 3.30 in the afternoon CET.
Anthony, that was great. Thanks very much for talking us through the open round proposition from Xilinx. Great to talk to you today. Thanks very much, Ray. Mm -hmm.